Crafty Gemini. I post weekly videos right here on my YouTube channel. And in this video tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how to make an hourglass quilt block using my 10 inch slicer ruler. The supplies you're gonna need to make my 10 inch slicer hourglass quilt are a stack of 10 inch by 10 inch squares. Obviously the more squares you have, the bigger you'll be able to make a quilt. Then you're also gonna need the 10 inch slicer ruler. And of course, as usual with my tutorials, I always include a link in the description box below the video on where you can click to find uh, some different 10 inch square packs like this one. And of course, my 10 inch slicer ruler. So this hourglass block that I'm gonna teach you how to make with the fabric and using my ruler is actually very similar to another block that I did a tutorial on, which I call my lava lamp block, okay? And this again was done with a 10 inch uh, by 10 inch square stack just like the one that we're going to be using in this tutorial so if you're ever looking for projects to use uh, my 10 inch slicer ruler on i include a link in the description box below basically to a web page that has a full list of a variety of projects and blocks and quilts that you can make using my specific 10 inch slicer ruler so just to give you a look this is the lava lamp block and if you notice the angles go out and then they come back in the hourglass block that we're going to work on in today's tutorial is actually the opposite angle. So instead, let's look at this side of it. This is basically going to be the block. Do you see how this goes kind of like this in and then out again? So this shape-ish is what you're going to see in the center, okay, of your blocks as we make each one of our blocks. So I just wanted to show you that because basically this block and the hourglass one are identical. It just depends on how you orient the ruler before you cut the fabric. To make our hourglass blocks, we need to first prep all of our squares, okay? To do that, just grab one square, and you can use on any cutting mat, but if you do have a rotating cutting mat, that will come in handy because it's a little bit easier to kind of spin the block around and cut on the opposite side. So I'll show you how to do it with this first. So we have one 10 inch by 10 inch square. We're gonna fold it on itself in half and try to match up the raw edges as best you can. Then I'm gonna take my 10 inch slicer and where you see the words here for 10 inch slicer, you're gonna flip it. So you're orienting it so one straight side of the ruler is gonna be matched up with this straight side of the square fabric that's folded. And then the narrower edge, notice this edge down here is wider. So the narrower edge is going to be at the top, which is the edge furthest away from your body. So I'm gonna line it up like this, all right? Then you're gonna follow this kind of asymmetrical angle that is exposed here on the side of the ruler and you're just gonna make a cut. And that is the first cut, okay? As you can see right there, I'll just move it away slightly so you can see the cut better. Now, remember, this is how I had my ruler oriented. Now you're simply going to flip it, again, to match up that straight edge on this opposite side now, and the narrow edge up at the top. So do you see how that's going? So this angle should be coming in here towards the center of the fabric square, and you should have the same thing on this side. However, if you're right-handed like me, to hold it in this opposite angle is a little bit cumbersome to kind of get in there with the rotary cutter. So you can always just use that rotating mat or walk around your table or whatever is easiest for you to do. I'm gonna line this up here, flush down here and here, and then I'm gonna make that cut as well. And you'll see that that's all it takes to cut your fabric squares. You make those two simple cuts, and when you open the fabric pieces up, you end up with three pieces that look like this. And if you notice, that center chunk by itself makes the hourglass shape. So if we do the exact same thing that we just did to the remaining squares in our fabric stack, then we can play a little swapping game with these pieces and then sew them back together. So it's quite simple. I'm gonna set this one aside and cut a few more for you and then I'll show you how to orient them and how you'll start piecing them together. Okay, so here I've cut out a square in the same way that we did this one, but I chose one of a contrasting fabric from the stack. So this would kind of serve as my light fabric and this as my dark. So when you can do that and you can match up two different prints from your fabric stack that really play nicely with each other and allow the different colors to pop next to each other, I think that's when you're gonna get the most effect in the overall block and the quilt design. So if you notice, all these three pieces are identical across the board. So what I'm gonna do is grab the center hourglass one from the light fabric 
and I'm gonna put it back in here with my dark fabric. So you can see how nicely these two fabrics are gonna go with one another. They really allow the hourglass shape in the center here to pop. And remember, we did the same cut, so this is the same. So now this one can go with this guy here. And again, you still have the same contrasting colors and it allows it to pop. So notice what we've done. We've cut up two 10 inch by 10 inch squares identically with my 10 inch slicer, but when we swap out the center units, we can recomplete a block, right? The same way, we have no fabric waste, and I'm gonna show you a real simple way on how to piece these seams. It's not as hard as you might think, and I think this is a great way to cut up a bunch of 10 inch squares and get a really nice and more visually interesting design than if you just sewed a bunch of the 10 inch squares together. Before we head over to the sewing machine, I wanted to show you one that's already been pieced so you can see what you're kind of aiming for when you head over with your individual units to sew them up at the machine. So here is the finished hourglass block, super cute. When we flip it over, first of all, you'll see that I pressed the seam allowances out and away from the center so we don't get any more additional bulk right here at these really uh, kind of narrow seams where it kind of peeks in of the hourglass shape. And I'm sure that you can barely see the stitching here, but it lies really, really flat all the way across the seam here. Now, if you notice, you might be thinking, is this a Y seam? Is this something kind of tricky that I need to sew in here? And it's really not. Because the angle is not super sharp, I mean, it goes in and it comes out, but it's not like it goes in here and then swings out at a 90 degree angle, okay? It still kind of flares out gently. It's easier to sew the seam allowance and kind of curve it as you're sewing. So I'll show you at the sewing machine how I do that so I can get some nice and flat seams here with no puckers right here. And when you give it a good press, it all lays nice and flat for you. So now let's grab these pieces and we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna show you a close-up shot of how I piece these. All right, so I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how I kind of mentally go through it so I can piece these together. First, we're gonna sew one side, so I'll set that one aside. And now, because the angle bounces back this way, I wanna kind of split it at that halfway point where we initially folded our fabric. I don't worry about this bottom leg of the seam yet. I just wanna focus on this. So I have them oriented side-by-side, side, pretty sides facing, the way that I want the finished block to look. Now we'll flip one on top of the other so pretty sides of both fabrics are touching. And I'm simply gonna match up this edge with this edge. I'm not worried about the bottom part of it yet because obviously it's not gonna match yet. It needs to be swung around this way. And then I'll match up the tip to the tip of that one. And you'll notice that I don't even use pins. This is, I for me at least, it works better if I kind of just work the seam as I'm at the sewing machine. So I'm gonna sew from here to around here. What I wanna do here is not a really hard pivot. So you'll see when I come around this, I kind of curve my way into that little point so that then it's easier for me to match this edge to here and finish sewing the seam. So we're starting off at the top with our quarter inch seam, a couple back stitches if you need them. And now I'm gonna start to swing this around. I'm just coming in to where I'm about a quarter of an inch away from the edge at that intersecting point. Notice I lifted up my presser foot and I stopped with the needle down so it can hold my position. Then we'll just swing this edge over to make the fabrics match, okay? And the key thing to keep in mind here is going to be right here where we start sewing. As long as where the needle comes down next into the next stitch is not puckered or pinched and it's just smooth fabric, you're gonna be fine. If it's puckered up here, no big deal, okay? It'll smooth out because it's just like that because the angle is bouncing back in an opposite direction. But as long as where the needle is going down and stitching is not pinched, then the seam is going to be perfectly smooth. So just keep that in mind. Make sure my raw edges are matching since I don't have any pins. You can put pins, of course. All right. So you can see how it looks. It might look puckered right there, but as long as the fabrics were smooth where you needed them to be, let me bring over my ironing board and iron. And I'll show you how we're gonna press it to lay it flat. Now, I like to press my seams to the bigger pieces, the outer background pieces, as opposed to the inside here. So I'm gonna lay this one just like I need it to be. Seam allowance going towards the darker fabric here. Okay, and you can see there's no puckers or pleats right here. Everything lays nice and smooth. So we're gonna do that 
And now that that one has been sewn down, we're going to repeat the same thing to the other side. Right here and here, again. Press the seam to the outer or darker fabric. And that is our completed hourglass quilt block. All right, so here are two of our finished blocks. As you can see, after you piece in the hourglass shape, you actually end up with a rectangular block versus a square. Because remember, we took in seams here and here, so it shrunk the 10 inches of the block in a little bit, but we didn't add any horizontal seams, so the measurement from here to here should still be the proper 10 inches if that's what you started off with. So keep that in mind. A lot of people tend to have this mentality of having to square this up to a proper square. I don't like to do that because I figure if you're paying a premium for the pre-cut squares, we might as well use all of the fabric. There's no point in making this a square because really what you'll end up with is more of a square quilt and most of us tend to like rectangular quilts anyways. All you're going to end up with, especially if you orient the blocks this way, as shown here, is a longer quilt than it is wide, which is going to be a perfectly fine rectangular quilt like most quilts that you end up making out there anyway. So for me, I don't see the point in trimming these down into a proper square and just wasting some fabric that I can otherwise leave in the finished quilt top and make my quilts a little bit bigger with no additional work. Does that make sense? So I'm going to continue to do this to a bunch of my other blocks so I can piece together a quilt top and then I will meet you back here so I can show you on the design wall what it looks like with a bunch more of these hourglass quilt blocks. Now here you can see 16 different hourglass blocks that I created and I laid them up on my design wall. I kind of like to work with the blocks little by little and see what type of an overall finished design I think the quilt wants to be turned into. So if you notice in this one here I've oriented so going up and down along the, uh, the, the design this way. On here if you look at this entire column all the background pieces are a light fabric and all the hourglasses going right down the middle are the dark fabrics and then it alternates so the next row over all the background pieces are dark and all the hourglasses are light in the next one again background pieces light and then hourglass are dark and when you see when it connects all the way up and down the quilt like that I think it tends to create a really fun uh, secondary design now if you don't like the way that that looks play around with the blocks until you get a layout that is pleasing to your eye now off to the far left there I have an example of a block that's a little bit too dark on dark for me and as you can see next to the remaining blocks that have really high contrast with a light fabric and a dark fabric next to each other, it doesn't really fit in. So this is something that I wanted to show because I want you to keep that in mind as you're coordinating and matching the different pieces, whether the background pieces and the hourglass, you know, you can choose the specific fabrics that really pop next to each other. And that one right there doesn't really pop that much because both of the fabrics used are really quite dark. Now here is a slightly different design. In this one, I left rows one, the top one and the third one the same and then I alternated every other row so the second row and the fourth row you can see that instead of the column being like hourglass fabrics going straight down dark fabrics you can see that the hourglass here is dark in this one it's light in this one it's dark in this one it's light and so they alternate so you get a really cool and a little bit different design than just the first layout so of course this block is really versatile I think it's really fun especially if you use light and dark fabric combinations for some high contrast so feel free to play around with the layout feel free to play around with the fabrics that you choose and have a lot of fun using my 10 inch slicer ruler so that's it for my hourglass quilt block tutorial. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make it. If you don't yet have your hands on my 10 inch slicer ruler, make sure you click open the link in the description box below this video and that will take you straight to my online shop where you can find one. Now remember, this is not the only project you can make with my ruler. 
As you saw early on in the video, you can also make the opposite of the hourglass, which is my lava lamp block. I also have a full list of video tutorials with step-by-step -step instructions on a variety of other blocks and projects you can make with the same one ruler. Now, if you don't know where that is, again, I've included the link for you in the description box below. So that's one cool thing about my rulers. You only buy the ruler. You don't have to buy individual patterns to learn how to use it. I give you a full free library archived of different video tutorials that you can make with the one ruler. So again, keep that in mind. If you need a quick project and you have some 10 inch squares on hand, I think this will make a great one. If you enjoyed the video tutorial, be sure to hit it with the thumbs up below. Share it with your crafty friends across the different social media sites. Don't forget to click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And go ahead and leave me a comment below and let me know what is your favorite color combination when it comes to making some high contrast quilt blocks like the hourglass quilt block. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye. And in this video tutorial, I'm teaching you how to make an hour block, hour block, <laughs> hourglass. <laughs> I'm gonna teach you how to make an hourglass quilt block using my 10 inch slicer ruler. My 10 inch slicer ruler. Why do I have that broadcaster voice? I always did want to be a broadcaster. <laughs> using my 10 inch slicer ruler. 10 inch slicer ruler. That is like hard to say smiling. Try it. And that's it for my 10, really? And that's it for my hourglass, hourglass quilt block, hourglass quilt block. You can find the, why am I talking so much? Thanks again for watching y'all and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Y'all, really? Yep, I live in the South.